Hi, I'm Don Hatfield, and I want to introduce you to a friend of mine. This is Mr. Plains of the Head, and um, I found this to be a very helpful tool uh, for understanding light planes, uh, the way that light falls upon an object, and basically makes it possible for us to paint objects. After all, it's light that shows us what's in the shadow or creates the, the illusion of form in our paintings as we render what's in the shadow and what's in the light. But the first thing we have to understand as oil painters is how light falls upon nature and how it gives us the opportunity to understand objects in terms of planes. <clears throat> um, what I'm going to be giving you is based on Howard Pyle's uh, philosophy of the form principle. It's based on John Singer Sargent's understanding of the classification of values. Um, I guess that's what would be the, the two main um, authors where I've gathered most of the material and uh, my understanding of Planes of the Head. Pyle said it takes the typical art student two years of practice and study to understand the planes that occur when light falls on an object. To understand what's in the shadow and what's in the light is very confusing. And the reason that most paintings fall apart is because the artist doesn't understand the, the absolute separation between shadow and light. And what often happens is, is that artists paint elements in the shadow area that are just as light as elements that are in the light areas. And so the form kind of turns to confetti. And I especially see this among plein air painters and uh, certain schools that emphasize color over value. Um, when it comes to um, color and value, I combine the two. And I heard this from Ray Kinsler, the notion of color value. I'm not quite sure where he got it, but I don't make a separation between color and value. But value is understood at first monochromatically. In other words, without reference to color, I want to try to point out what happens when light falls on an object. If you look at the planes of the head here, you'll see that certain areas are lighter uh, and certain planes are darker. The separation between what's in the shadow and what, what's in the light is confused a little bit here because we only we have a number of light sources. If you have a single light source, it's much easier to classify the values. It's much easier to see where the light is falling on the object and then where the shadow begins and what's in between. What's in between light and shadow is halftone. It's neither completely in the light or completely in the shadow. And it's in the halftone where the color of the object uh, is most evident. In direct light, the color of the object whether it's an orange or an apple or a pear or a head or a tree, is often bleached out. In the shadow, there's not enough light to really discern the color. In the halftone, which is neither completely in the shadow or completely in the light, you can most readily discern the color or the richness of the um, what we call the local color or the color of the thing itself. Thing in itself. Now I said that the planes of the planes of the head here are somewhat confused because we have more than one light source. I have light source uh, that is coming down on me from the lights above, but there's also light coming from this direction, bouncing off of this into this object. And so this this here, whether it's a wall or another object, becomes itself a source of light, casting its light into an area of lesser light. In this case. I can see where the planes occur coming from this direction. I can see where they hit and, um, you know, it gives it some distinction in the shadow area. But still, this remains that this area is basically in the shadow. The basic line of the shadow comes down like this, travels down the nose, under the nose, and down the throat. This is basically in the shadow, and this is in the light. It's most distinguishable. Uh, probably under the eye, here, uh, beside the nose, under here, where these light sources are not able to get to it and where the reflected light can't get to it. 
This is what a, something completely in the shadow would probably look like. These, well, it, in fact, it does look like this because this area right here, right here, and right here, probably under the eyelid, these planes are neither receiving light from the direct light source or the secondary light source. And they represent shadow areas. If I put this hat on the planes of the head, <clears throat> I can see this round area here. It's a little easier to discern where the light is hitting and then where there's shadow. In between this light and shadow is an area down the middle, which is the half tone. And if I were painting this, the color of this hat would be most distinguishable right in here. It would probably be some kind of combination of yellow, red, orange, richness of color. This would be, the color here would be bleached out a little bit and would take on the color of the, um, the temperature of the light, whether it was a cool light or a warm light. I know this is kind of complicated, um, but it's this kind of thinking that I'm, that's going around in my mind as I'm painting. I try to discern what's in the shadow and what's in the light. And then uh, secondarily, I try to understand what's being reflected from another light source and um, what's in the halftone between the light and the shadow. Um, for oil painters, when we paint still life objects, um, especially objects that tend to, to be round or organic, this kind of thinking is, is really important. When we, um, whether you're painting the arm, the head, uh, objects in a still life, also in nature, understanding um, what the source of light is. In the case of the sun hitting uh, from above and the earth becoming a secondary source of light, reflecting its light into a lesser light. And so in paintings of the figure out, out of doors, you have the sun or, or the globe and the globe of, of the heavens casting a cool light on top and the earth casting warm light underneath. Uh, this is one application of the planes of the head taken uh, to the figure out of doors. It's very difficult at times when you have a round object to think in terms of planes and sometimes you almost have to artificially think this way in order to organize or classify the values. Um, but it's only after you see what's in the shadow and what's in the light that you're able to attach your color in a way that gives the object that you're trying to paint real life. Thanks a lot and uh, hope to see you outside painting sometime.